Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about your first steps in Germany. Stay tuned. <laughs> Oh, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, it's Sunday when I'm recording this video. I, I just want to say that I think in the last month or so, we've had literally two days. Since the beginning of the year, there have been two or three days when it was sunny. And today is one of those days. And I'm just so grateful for this sun. <laughs> like the sun just gives me energy, you know, energy that... You don't have when it's gloomy personally for me anyway let's get into this video um, you're here in germany or you're coming you're planning to come and there are some very specific steps that you need to take that i wish was itemized for me when i first came otherwise you're just running around like a headless chicken trying to do everything in the right order in the right time and you end up just wasting so much time going from place to place and they're like no you don't you can't come here you don't have this document you don't have that document so first things first, before you get to Germany, take some good passport photos. Now, me personally, I take awful photos. So it didn't matter to me if I took the photos in a drugstore or just, it didn't matter. But if you know you want your pictures to look good because you're going to need a lot of passport photos, I would say maybe have about six of them already taken that you like because you need to submit passport photos for different things. So that's the first item. Next on the list, my list that I have with me here. Because I came prepared. The next item is to sign your rental contract. So let's say you already decided on Vega Gezucht, you met some people and um, they said, yes, the flat is yours. And you've probably already signed the contract um, online or you sent it to them by email. Now you need to actually get a copy of that contract and in ensure that it has been signed also by your landlord so that yes you are signed you have a contract you have a place to live officially so with this signed contract you need to now go to the what is called the burger bureau which is basically city hall where they basically register people who live in that city um this is really important because when you get this document saying that you live on this particular property and you're registered like a lot of things just fall into place once you've done that please the next thing to do is put your name on the mailbox now that might sound really strange and for me it was also really strange in germany they rely heavily on post so you need to be able i say need a lot but you really need to be able to receive post and just giving the address of your place is not enough but your name needs to also be on the mailbox so what i what i did when I first started, I mean, I, I was really lucky that I had some German flatmates that they helped walk me through a lot of the processes. But you need to ensure that you either get like a little tape or something, put this on the mailbox and ensure it's not in a place where it's going to wash away or anything. Because the, when the postman comes, he's just looking for names at this address. So let's say you live on Berlin Street 203. This is a random <laughs> street I just thought of. So you live on Berlin Street 203. Bear in mind that there are also many people who live in this apartment building. So saying that you live on Berlin Street 203 is not enough. You need to have your name on the mailbox and then know you're saying, why don't I just put the number of the apartment? Somehow, that's not so common. Like in my, in my building where I live here, it's only three apartments and I would be essentially apartment number two. But somehow this is not a thing here in Germany. They need your name on the mailbox. Okay, next, next point. We've got that covered. Get a German number. Because on all the forms that you're going to have to sign, you're going to have to give a telephone number, some way that people can contact you other than your email address. So get yourself a German number. There are many companies, um, for example, Vodafone, Alditalk, O2, T-Mobile, I think, T-Mobile, whatever their German version of it is, but it's pink and they have it. I personally have Ali Talk. It works fine for me. Um, so once you get the SIM card, it's registered. Please record your number. It's going to have many digits. So 
it's going to be difficult to remember but after a while of telling it to people you're going to remember like you need to open a bank account and this is really probably one of the most important things that you need to do um and from this bank account this is where a lot of things are obviously going to be paid things that you have to pay comes directly out of your bank account now there are also of course many different banks within germany um and what you need to ensure is that the bank that you choose offers the blocked account services as a requirement of the foreigner's office you need to supply a uh, proof of funds in a blocked account so and that simply means that you've created this special account in the bank that only allows you to withdraw a maximum amount of the 816 euros per month um yeah you might think okay this is really like why would i want them to put a hold on how much of my money i can take a month but when you think about it some young people are not so good with funds so the way that this account sets up is set up is that you can't take more than you're allowed every month so you kind of have a budget and it works out really well like you shouldn't be spending that much anyway as a student like what are you doing so it's really a way to help you control your funds and to make sure that you don't run into problems because nobody wants that um once again there are many bank companies or bank institution institutions there are many banking institutions um to choose from and i really can't guide you on which one to take personally um i've done it with deutsche bank they have a very nice app i mean it works fairly well um and their blocked account services are also good but i do remember that i had a i had to pay a fee to actually block the account which i found was so ridiculous like i have to pay for you to put a hold on my you know um i did have a friend who was with sparkasa and they have something a bit more traditional i would say in that you have two accounts and you have to transfer the money from one account to the other the blocked account every month like it's a very complicated situation and it involves having a bank book that wasn't for me um but they have some other options like i will give you a list here of some of the banking institutions that they have and you can just basically choose a lot of them though you need to make an appointment ahead of time so probably this is something you want to be considering maybe even before you come to germany probably have an idea of probably where you would want to start your banking if not i don't think it's a big issue like they know that people are starting fresh in october which brings me back to the point come ahead of time <laughs> so that you have time to do this all of a sudden my book decided want to jump on the ground ay 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 so banking check the next thing health insurance now health insurance is mandatory for everybody in germany and i know you're thinking but why like why do i need to pay you know for health insurance but at first i was kind of skeptical about it but then when i thought about all the benefits that you get from having the health insurance from having paying health insurance and as a student you pay a very low rate and you get a lot of good benefits so i think as a student you would pay less than 200 euros of course the price raises sometimes signif i mean with inflation you would have an increase in price um but yeah as a student you pay less than 200 euros a month and with that you can do things like go to the doctor if you're feeling ill you can go to the doctor you can get medication and you usually just have to pay a small amount on the medication that's recommended by the doctor you actually only have to pay yourself a small amount sometimes it's like 5 euro sometimes it's a little more sometimes it's a little less so actually there are many benefits for example going to the dentist you are allowed to go to the dentist or oh, not allowed of course you are allowed but the health insurance would usually cover one visit per year to get a cleaning and yeah that's just a very <laughs> a very broad summary of the health insurance and why you should do it again there are many companies depending on where you're located um the companies do vary what may be better in that area i really can't recommend However, I studied in Eastern Germany and I was with Auka Plus um as a student and I'm actually still with Auka Plus now. They're actually one of the best 
once you get to your city and you probably meet some people or maybe your flatmates and you ask them, you know, which health insurance are we with? Which health insurance are you with? How much do you pay? I'm so sorry. How much do you pay? What are these special offers? Do they have people who speak in English? This is very important because when you first come, obviously you're not going to be fluent in German. I've been here for, I've been here for more than four years and I am not fluent in German. So I don't expect that you will also be fluent in German. So you definitely want to consider a health insurance provider that speaks English so that you can really, they can really explain to you the whole drama, you know, what you need to do, your health insurance card, when does it expire, how do you have to use it, important. Um, and last but not least, on my special list here is a residence permit. Um, when you apply for the visa um, at the local embassy in Trinidad and Tobago, you will usually get a visa for around three months. It, within this three months, they expect you to now go to the Auslander Behörde, it's called, and get your residence permit. And this residence permit is usually valid for around a year, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, depending on the amount of money in your bank account. Um, I would definitely suggest that you try to get an appointment at the Auslander Behörde as soon as possible. Um, I've seen people say, you know, wait till your visa is going to expire in a month or whatever. To be honest, it really varies. If you live in a big city like Berlin, for example, it's very difficult to get an appointment. Whereas if you live in smaller cities, it's very easy. So if you live in a small city, you know that it's a small university city. Of course, you can wait till just before the month and then you get an appointment for like the next week and it's fine. But really consider if you live in very large cities that you probably need to do this ahead of time. Also, some universities also give the opportunity to help um, see your documents through to help this residency permit situation. So all of the students are not flooding the Auslander Behörde at the same time. So maybe you want to also see if your university offers this service where you can go there and they will see about processing your documents to facilitate you getting the residence permit. That being said, the residence permit does have a fee. It's usually around 100 euros with every renewal. Um, this is mandatory. <laughs> you have to pay for it. Um, and yeah, the thing, why I put residence permits last is because you have to ensure that you have all the documents that I mentioned before before you head over to the outside to be heard of. So you must have uh, you must have your signed rental contract. You must be registered at the Burger Bureau. You must have a German phone. Actually, no, you don't need to have a German phone number, but it would be good. Um, you need to have a bank account and you need to have health insurance and of course, passport photo and your passport. So um, those are the things that you really need to have. I have special mention here. Ensure to go to the orientation at your university. Here they will really explain to you, one, how it is around the city, how to get around, what to do, what not to do. They will also sign you up with your university email, which is actually really useful. As a student, you have many benefits, both for Amazon, not both for, but with online things, Amazon, different shopping platforms, they offer so many offers for students so having this is really important and then your student id which in my university was called a tosca and let me tell you <laughs> with my tosca i don't need anything else like i didn't need my wallet i didn't need you put in, you don't need money you don't need credit cards you don't need bank cards but if you have your tosca you can definitely get through a few days without having any of those other things and with this Tosca or student ID, we were able to take public transportation, pay for meals at the university, print stuff in the library and do different things in the library just with this one card. So um, a lot of universities offer similar services where you have public transportation is included in your student ID. So make sure you know about that. And if that is your case, listen, this, your Tosca, 
please you don't want to lose it i even had some friends actually like their student id actually opened the door to their flat or their room to their room because they lived in student housing and they needed to have this to open your room they needed to have it to use the washing machine listen that thing is like I think I might even still have it in my wallet. Why? Because I've just been so accustomed to having it with me at all times, you know? So that's it for this video. If you liked this video and you would like to see more content like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.